Real quick, I just want to confirm, no I'm not dirty. This video is being recorded the same day as the last video. So just chill on me, bruh. Enjoy the video. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, I'm okay, DB, back at it again with another video today. And today is a tragic day in the United States, in the world. Because Mr. Beast has been exposed as a fraud? I didn't see the video. I have seen no parts. I heard that it's illegal lotteries, all types of faking videos. Mr. Beast has been going strong for years now. I remember back in 2016 when he used to do the intro videos. And I used to watch the fake intro videos. Those used to be mad fun, bro. I mean, the bad intros, not the fake intros. Like, I remember that, bro. It was, it was good times. And now they're saying that he's a fraud? He's a fake? It all started with Ava. And now, it's happening to Mr. Beast. So let's get right into this video, man. That's sad to hear, bro. It's bad business. It's sad news. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. If you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it, you'd be the most powerful man on Earth. Bro, like, he was averaging over 100 million views per video. Do you understand how insane that is? Averaging over 100 million views per video that's not heard of bro people don't do that on a regular basis but mr beast was doing that that's crazy works come on now I'm promoting gambling but it, i think people are gonna say this to, now. Very smart to average millions of dollars on youtube videos is a gamble wait what I see this name very smart with your money throws away millions of dollars on youtube videos is a gamble bro the man who has created one of the he literally had 300 million subs like he just made a video two weeks ago 50 youtubers fight for a million dollars like this bro ha, this is bad this is bad I know. Lives. don't have to pay anything to enter the gym. This is legal. I don't get it. It's a scam. I'm telling fake signatures. fake signatures. It's a, a contestant almost died. Trashing a beach. Yo, it's a lot going on, bro. Hi, I wanted to provide some context to this video. I'm a former Mr. Beast employee, and today I am alleging that the company uh, rigged videos and... Uh, Why is he making it weird, though? Like, he has it in the bag. Like, you you got it, bro. You are exposing Mr. Beast for being a fake. But you cannot come in the video looking like this. And it's not to say that this is the moment of his regular appearance, but why are you zooming in on the camera? I'm exposing Mr. Beast here today. I'm ex Chill, bro. Making me feel uncomfortable. Make a lottery and sold fake signatures. I, I would consider that fraud, okay? Thank you. Enjoy the video. So this is part one into my investigation into Mr. Beast. Uh, I recorded this before the Chris stuff came but out. But I can't hate because he's coming with the info, so I can't. I, we got to take it where we can get it at. You feel me? Um, Because I see a lot of people saying, like, oh, if you knew, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I was going to come forward. And also, like, going to the authorities isn't going to work because what are you going to say? Like, you heard rumors that this person is this way or that, you know, there's obviously evidence of, like, the shad based stuff. Like, that's been out for a while. People have internally known at the company that like Chris is kind of a a potential miners attracted person. And, That's and the crazy. Company protects her, and or they were protecting her, and they protected her as long as they could. Jimmy knew, everyone knew. So you know, which I think that's more of a red flag than anything I'm going to reveal in this video. But um, you know, those messages happen in like Mr. Beast discords, and yeah, I don't know. It's a mess when like Mr. Beast contestants are being exposed to like minor attracted persons and the company's protecting them you know there's a big emphasis at the company of like how to manipulate children like understanding their psychology and everything and like seeing that that's sort of used in weird ways and you know there's been like parasocial relationships and you know encouraging like almost children simping for these people and you know maybe that's as nefarious as it gets or maybe it goes deeper Anyway, here's an old podcast clip of Jimmy explaining that he knows that his audience is young. Oh, which is an old clip. You could say, like, his audience grew up. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then, and his content's only gotten younger. I'm about also, to say, like... just shows that, like, he understands the YouTube I mean, I think that everybody bullshit, knows that, like, majority, like, bro, I was, like, six years old watching Uber Hacks Nova. If you know how it is, you're a real OG. 
I was watching Jack Septic Guy. I was watching uh YouTubers who I had no business watching because they're cursing. I mean, they they might have some sexual jokes in there. You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 do things that you shouldn't do as a child. That's established. So honestly, you can't control that. Cause if I know that when I was a little kid, I was watching YouTubers who I had no business watching. Who am I to judge? You know what I'm saying? I'm watching CM Pulse for, the, for my wrestling fans. I'm watching all types of things that I should not watch because they do not pertain to kid to kid friendly content. But it's life though. He used that as a defense, but he knows. Uh, so here's that clip, and then I'll get into the video. The average demographic is what 13 through 17. Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says like 18 to 24. But I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's a lot like that because you know little kids lie about their age or they're on their you know like but well, yeah and then i have but, like a fucking massive one for like the 40 year old range because all the fucking idiots are on their parents account now mr beast <laughs> intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds for profit using uh three simple steps which closely align with the three major types of behavioral learning step one is getting the viewer to associate the brand with trust and authority mr beast videos are real and he's a great guy that gives away big i mean rewards but everybody people. would think everybody would want that reputation i mean why would you want to be known as a fake person on the internet doing like fake giveaways and all that like why would you want to be a person like like how rice gum had all those scandals and people like that you know what i'm saying like what's that guy's name i can't think of them the scandals with like him and phase banks and all that you know what i'm saying like why would you want to be associated with that of course not followers i will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are in fact fake Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that benefits Mr. Beast, when they do what he tells them to do, they win big rewards. Is he subscribed? You are subscribed. Here's some money. Have a good day. Wow. Some of them feel like I just walk around with a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, thanks for watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money. When people are devout followers of Mr. Beast, they get- Bro, rewards. I looked at that. I, when he said stuff like that, I, I, I viewed it as a joke. Like. Come on, that's funny, bro. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards in return. Now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers or random subscribers like themselves are winning big rewards when they do what Mr. Beast tells them. These young viewers are explicitly told repeatedly that if they subscribe, if they buy products or act in some way that benefits the brand, they will win big rewards. Sports. Trust Mr. Beast, watch him help others, contribute to his cause, and one day he'll help you too. That's the formula. Subscribe for a Lamborghini. And oh, subscribe. I hope that's not like trying to do something like negative against God, though. Let's not, let's not do that. But I see the premise of what he's saying, but let's not try and paint it as if the whole that I'm not gonna get into that right You could be in one of the subscribe right now and you might get you next next week. Week. You you have have But bro, this is like I, I never took that seriously. I seen that for my entire life watching Mr. Beast. I never I never took that seriously. Subscribe and you can come next time I give you hundred dollars. Subscribe again, subscribe and you can subscribe and subscribe button. You could also win hundred dollars. We always fly subscribers down. They never fly random subscribers down. Mr. Beast fakes his videos in ways that are worse than you realize. Uh I say that because he's been exposed for faking videos before and the common really? response is, why does it matter if the videos are fake? They're just meant to be entertainment. A large part of Mr. B's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. Oh like, yeah, it's a huge so, problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. But also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, cause what we do is not scripted. So you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. He's fucking going insane. Like, I'm actually like, he's bombing me right now. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him die through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted.
You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him. Only some asshole would do something like that. After doxing and bullying the pilot some more, like a f***ing douchebag. Turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> and Eric just starts pushing buttons. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what it came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Max, is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. My life is a lie. Mr. Beast got the one up on me. Which one did you want? <laughs> I looked at you scared the hell out of me. My life is a lot of me. Mac, let's let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just like uh, you know, playing catch with my dad, you know. For a year? What do you how do you make money? <laughs> How are you, uh, like, surviving? Basically, like, my main strategy is I, I go to, like, a uh, like grocery store type places. Grocery store type places? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I basically, I basically, I'll do it when I get there. I usually get, like, like a, an amount of food that was like, a week or so, right? With, with what money? The money that I've made. How did you make it? Huh? Where? Yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they. Come on, beast! They didn't have when it rained on day two and after standing the whole night completely soaked you didn't spend the night soaked jimmy you slept on the production yacht it's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things but no we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things uh, in this video this wink was added in post in fact, god, 58 was bro. actually on the far opposite side god bro this is where they claim that they don't fake things this is hurting my but soul no, we have to be the Fake uh, in this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. So we got 50 minutes. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Okay, so Mr. Beast fabricates some contestant dialogue and timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, oh that bro. contestant had to get out for her job. I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Hey, anyone I'm friends with watching that wants 10 grand? They are never... You he just did a Kai at Mr. Beast stream. And the next thing you do is get exposed for being a liar for all these years. It hurts my soul. I I remember when this wait with the with the counted to a hundred thousand was that fake too? It's like what the fuck, bro? I was there from the beginning, bro. 
from the P from the prime Mr. Beast when bro was not even popping like that. He had like a hundred K, two hundred K. This is not fair, bro. I want a refund for all the years. Give me my years back, dog. Once he started making this content, I stopped watching. And now I see the reason why. Cause he's a fake. He's a phony. He got me. <laughs> Yo, bro, I'm done. Subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted, according to a former Mr. Beast employee. In 100 boys versus 100 girls, we were told that it would be a PR problem if the boys won by a lot. Also, we didn't have enough girls to film, so several Mr. Beast employees stepped in for the video, but most had to get out almost immediately. So production was told to get more boys out to make it closer. Also, at the end, when we divided the circuits to 10 parts, there was a shift change in the people monitoring the contestants. After that, I noticed no more girls got out, so I think it was also pretty much rigged. Oh, this is a short-term employee that wants to be anonymous. I ain't gonna lie, bro. <laughs> this, this part could be fake. Like, you can't really confirm that this is honestly a true situation, but, like, bro, this looks bad, man. It would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money, uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but seeing how much they're willing to have them on camera i'm willing to believe that they did in fact help them off camera you know, apparently at the end they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge and to be clear obviously the girls had an unfair start with having so many mr beast employees get out immediately you know i think they all did deserve five thousand dollars for that but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning i think i think that's the expectation when you run a game show but hey that was a while ago so i'm just glad they're not doing another rigged boys versus girls video <laughs> So knowing that Mr. Beast likes the results to be close and that offstage producers can sort of influence how a challenge progresses, I want to show one more example. This is a real-time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now immediately the intro is sped up and the timer is clearly added in post and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real-time. He reaches the bottom floor. I don't know who Darcy, whatever, whatever his name is, but he's a, a, apparently a camera train. Like, bro, Mr. Beast, you can tell man. That these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room. So they could sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in this video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money. So rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing, but there are many examples of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie mm. all the knots so that. that we know they've tied them at the exact that same sense, tension. Though. I mean, we get down to inches and then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is on any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game. Mm -hmm. Extreme one million dollar hide and seek. Rosanna Pancino on the rigged creators hide and seek video. But it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can target they can certain see kind of what area you're in. Ah. Mm -hmm. And they came to my area many times, and I was in the smallest. Why did you lie? Why did you say in the video that you found Logan literally one minute before Zach? I outlasted Logan and was proud of what I accomplished. It actually built some confidence in myself that wasn't there before. I don't know, been a while. Let's call and figure it out. If you don't know, Mr. Beast edited Rosanna and Quackity out of the top three, creating a fictional story where Logan Paul was top three. Mr. Beast does not deny this.
Nah, how, he can't come back from this, bro. It's over. This cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, and small ones. I contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space, and I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't even open the door because they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in there oh and they God. opened all the cabinets, and my heart was like, oh, they're going to find me. They're going to find me. <laughs> And then I could hear them saying, like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing. And was was found in transition after they told everyone to move. Was she unfairly targeted? The air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. So I am up here. Okay, I feel good about this spot. If I never even camera, questioned well, especially him. Because this was a I always thought that he was just mm. a real nigga. He's making real exactly videos. Why would I worry about Mr. Cheating. Beast? He's definitely he doing the, the real thing. And guarantee you, if I claimed, if I climbed in the ceiling, Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! <sighs> Creative Games is not for charity. Okay, let's talk about it. Like TikTok star the Charlie D'Amelio family was accused of cheating on trivia questions after winning three hundred thousand dollar charity account. Creative Games two and three trivia and hide and seek had nothing to do with charity. The winners of the competition would receive prize money under the vague condition that they give the money to their fans. Hey, my cousin is a fan of my videos. Zach King made two highly viewed monetized videos with the prize money. Both the winners of Creator Games 1 and 2, D'Amelio and Zach, were accused of cheating. Mr. Beast does not care about fairness in his competitiveness. In, in it, fuck. Mr. Beast does not care about fairness in his competitions. He cares only about making the best video possible. The trivia tournament also had multiple factual mistakes. No one seemed to notice. Spell, possum, and oldest living animal question correct answers were wrong. Ensuring fairness in challenges like this is not difficult. But Mr. Beast thinks it makes the video worse, so he doesn't do it. I'm glad y'all all enjoyed this event to, to everyone saying things were unfair because I let multiple people compete on one team. To be honest, it's fun and to bring the community together. Don't overthink things and please be nice. Ah, man, this is bad. Also, I think some of the Mr. Beast giveaways have been fake, uh, but I'll get to that later. So now that I've explained some of the ways that Mr. Beast lies to build trust with his audience, I want to go on to explain how he exploits that trust for profit through running illegal lotteries, selling fake signatures, giving children diabetes, and more. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children. Who may I ain't gonna lie, when I was 10 years old, I knew he was joking. I ain't thinking, come on, bro. Detentions as forms oh, it's of always knew it was a joke. You weren't born understanding sarcasm. Whatever the reason, these are I'm a very sarcastic individual, so I know both. Just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version. The call to action giveaway. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. I may have fallen for a few of these, though. People are still doing fucking giveaways. Holy <laughs> shit, it's so annoying. Stop this fucking shit. I'm so tired of it. Fucking 10 years of YouTube. People are still like buying subs for this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm going to be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. So yeah, that's what a call to action giveaway is. At best, they are a way to buy subscribers, but much of the time they are legitimate scams. Either a YouTuber doesn't actually give away a prize, or in the case of these live streams, they are illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase. And obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I'm that's just gonna show you words. the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done and you can make your own conclusions. The FTC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. 
To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this. In 10 minutes, right, because we gotta give them time to, to do their cart, we'll give two orders $500 each. Five minutes, someone's getting three grand in their Someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Two minutes, newest order, gets $2,000. Good luck. He's a scammer. Oh, damn. Okay, everybody. So this was a six hour live stream. Uh, they took it down off YouTube, but five hours of it are still up on their Facebook page. Uh, and during those five hours, I counted 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win. And then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Stephen, uh, Stephen K. Okay. Oh, Stephen K. Steve and there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Stephen made a profit. Stephen's a handsome name. So he actually walked away with some money. We're proud of you, Stephen. I counted 13 of these extra shady lotteries where they did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. Okay, so we're gonna put two iPhones in this pinata and we're gonna give it to someone who orders a shirt in three minutes. Five minutes. Buy a limited edition shirt or hoodie, and we're gonna pick a random one in 10 minutes and give them $2,000. Have we done iPhones yet? Oh, yeah, think about that, bro. Oh, wait. Hey, yeah. Daryl, first He's actually, before claiming, oh, if you order at this particular moment, we're gonna give you what you want. And then, boom, they order it. And then he, he waits more time than he said, and he gives it to somebody else. That's nasty. If that's even really, if they're even really getting the money on top of that. So these clearly fit the definition of an illegal lottery. These clips are also not out of context. No one ever said no purchase necessary. There's nothing in the description or on the website. At one point, Mr. Beast is informed that they ran out of PlayStations and he says, are we trying to not sell merch? Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away. <laughs> are we trying to not sell merch? <laughs> So he clearly knows that they're making more money by running these illegal lotteries. Another shady thing he did was constantly suggest that they're doing too many giveaways to make a profit. My guy over there doing the numbers is like, stop, stop please. Like, you do realize every time you give away an Xbox at a thousand dollars, you don't make money. I'm like, oh. okay. <laughs> bro, it, it, I, I never thought that he was a bad guy. Even right now I'm laughing because it's like, I'm thinking he's really genuine, but this video is really, 53 minutes of exposing that he's not genuine like damn no, we're not gonna make money what are we doing guys we're gonna check after this stream and it's gonna be like, like oh no what a waste yeah i know we're gonna break neutral when there is just no way they were ever even close to losing money on this stream i don't know who this is but you just got a pair of airpods oh my gosh we're not making money guys we need to stop giving everyone something we just like, lost like seven almost grand. everything almost everything that someone's bought we put something in their package i'm not gonna make so money. You in five hours they gave away about fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff uh and sold over fifty thousand t-shirts selling these t-shirts at 42 dollars each profit margin would be about 22 dollars but even if they were making like one dollar per shirt they would still be fine uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my God, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? <laughs> That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked. So it's probably not actually random. You know, humans have biases. Imagine Jimmy tells the guy off camera, hey, pick a name right now. And he sees two names. One is easy to pronounce, one is not. 
This is why lotteries are heavily regulated to ensure fairness. Also, obviously you have to be 18 to play the lottery. It's gambling. Mr. Beast isn't just promoting gambling to children here. He's running the casino. And this isn't even close to the worst stream he's done. Four months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24 hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. And by the way, the rest of these streams were taken down shortly after upload. So all I have is some old clips and Reddit threads talking about them. Right, now this stream did say, we are doing a ton of giveaways, no purchase necessary in the description. Uh, but to be eligible to win most prizes, you had to make a purchase. So, yes. Would you guys prefer, would you prefer that we throw money in random orders? Or that we throw items in random orders. Yeah. Somebody screamed in chat, I want to switch. Hey. Buy a shirt. In 30 minutes, we are giving away my car to someone that buys merch. Which each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery, which obviously Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a, he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability you know, pretending to be ignorant of the law. You know, YouTube's a little different than this. Um, yeah. Because YouTube, I can just do stuff like that. I can just be like, you know what? Pull up a database of 100 people that bought chocolate bars and pick 100 random ones. Got it. I think I can do that over here. I don't know. So mm -hmm. I don't want to say anything. And then someone be like, yeah, actually, that's illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find any way to enter the big Tesla giveaway without spending at least $42. And we're giving away a Tesla to someone random who bought stuff. They also gave away 24 tickets, which gave you the opportunity to be in a video. Again, most of these tickets, you had to make a purchase to win. One random person that buys in what time frame? 10 minutes. We're gonna put this in someone's order that buys something. And we're gonna have 24 yeah. people. We're gonna put them in 24 different circles. Million dollars on the line, have some fun, you know what I'm saying? Also, this video never happened. There is no Mr. Beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars. Unless it ended up being 100 people in a circle competing for $500,000, but that's a smaller prize and much worse odds. So like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. That's just nasty, bro. Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. Even though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. <laughs> oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Another thing that just annoys me is Jimmy constantly says during these live streams that he's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away. Oh, and I just like giving away stuff. It's kind of funny. Imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says, hmm. Guys, the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as a, an act of generosity. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com, anyone watching any of the lives. And um, we're gonna throw iPhones in some of them. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes reuploads. But almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes laws. Well, I, it was, I thought it was him. I was like, keep going. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's go. Wait, it's literally like his like initial. Who is it? My cousin. <laughs> Wait, really? Actually, that's illegal. Some of the comments. He's been breaking the law. I mean, and he's been getting away with it. I ain't gonna lie. I definitely would have tried to get some items off of bro. I would have, if I had the money to just buy an item off the, off real quick, pop an item in there. Hopefully, I get some, get a brand new iPhone, get a PlayStation, get an Xbox, get a Switch. I don't really want to push though. But you feel me? I see the vision. He's a W scammer. I, he He's scamming, but you're still getting something back in return. So you don't really feel like you're getting scammed if you win the prize. Now, nah, if you don't win the prize, you still don't think you can get game because you just didn't, you just didn't get lucky. He's he's playing a dangerous game, but it's working or it was working because he's cooked now. See in threads about this live stream are that they only signed large T-shirts, so when they selected an order to give a prize, it was apparently always a large or extra large T-shirt. Uh, they kept saying things like "buy in the next 15 minutes for a chance to win" and then not honoring it. Multiple people claiming that their name was read to win a prize and they never received it. This person is still tweeting about it to this day. Now there's a lot more people complaining about the deceptive sales tactics. Reading all this. 
Never mind. I stand corrected. He definitely was doing some L scamming. I was wrong completely. Bro said that he did not get his PS4 or PS5 to this day. Yeah, never mind. This really upsets me because I spent money I honestly didn't have for five shirts at different times during the live when they said things like buy now and you will get prize or money. And I received two orders and nothing but shirt, both with MB and one with a heart and one with a smiley. I was hoping for at least a couple things for Christmas for my family. Now this commenter also goes on to explain that she's disabled, has PTSD. What? Lotteries and scams specifically target vulnerable populations like that. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched the live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited to win something and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no $100, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. And obviously people can lie on the internet, but a lot of people are independently claiming the same things. Like that at the end of the live stream, they said they were putting $100 in every order. Now, my speculation is that they put $100 in every order that came across the table that they signed, but I'd be interested to see how they worded that. If the video of this live stream ever resurfaces, I, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true, uh, which Mr. Beast definitely has this stream saved. He saves all his footage. Uh, so I'll ask you, Jimmy, will you publish this to prove your innocence? Also using archive.org, we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream. And while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever, uh, it does say this limited T signed by Mr. Beast and crew, uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew. And it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So he come on, bro. Here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature. Then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Nasty. Make it any more obvious. You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature. Even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Cool. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his. Mr. Beast, this is so cool. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said Yo, during the last what what and then put? readjusts his body and rubs his hands. When you are stressed, there will be more rubbing of the hands to gather, or together, which will increase in frequency and force. Commit. I can't speak, bro. I can't spell, bro. I can't pronounce together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream that this is the last time he'd ever sign anything and that was just a lie. Why would Illegal he even say some BS like that? targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. You're oh, very smart with your money. The guy who just throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? <laughs> By this point, Mr. Beast noticed a problem with these CTA giveaways. I mean, obviously they're illegal, but more importantly, they're not as profitable as they could be. Look at it like this. There are two value propositions at play here. The perceived value of the product and the perceived value of the chance to win a prize. So for something like these $42 t-shirts, if the viewer values the chance to be in a video at $10, they need to value the t-shirt at an additional $32 to make the purchase. So the more expensive the product, the less effective the lottery is. You wanna get the product as close to $0 as possible, so people are just paying for the perceived value of the lottery. That's what's most profitable because humans can't accurately comprehend the difference between one in a million odds versus one in a billion odds. They both kind of just compute as, 
I have a small chance to win. Uh, which Mr. Beast is well aware of this flaw in human mental arithmetic. At past a certain point, the average human is like, large sum of money, click. And like, right. larger sum of money doesn't really impact the viewing experience. So also the larger your audience is, the more profitable a lottery will be. Anyway, Mr. Beast wanted the cheapest product possible to use for these CTA giveaways. Basically a piece of paper, but you obviously couldn't sell a piece of paper without getting backlash. So in January 2021, three months after the last shirt signing stream, Mr. Beast did a live stream where for only $10, viewers could send a picture to the moon. Wait, JPEGs what? that are going to the moon? And of course he did more illegal lotteries. Uh, just to keep things fun and interesting, as if putting a photo on the moon. It's an interesting enough. Someone who puts a photo on the moon, or, or if you buy the bundle, whatever, and the next 30 minutes, we'll just fly you down to be in a video. Three years later, the spaceship finally launched, carrying beautiful pictures of deceased loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. It fucking exploded. Loved ones to the moon where they would be immortalized. It First US spacecraft to attempt moon landing in decades burns up after failed mission. Fucking exploded. Wow. So obviously Mr. Beast refunded everyone, right? Right? Is it Mr. Beast's fault that the rocket exploded? No. Is it his fault that he advertised it as for $10 I will put your photo on the moon? For $10 I'll put whatever picture you want on the moon. When he couldn't guarantee that? Yes, of course. October 16th, 2021, same thing. Buy this shirt to be in a video. <laughs> Shopify dashboard. We just have like a, a random number generator and then like we just put the na number, like if there's a thousand orders, we just put it, picks the number between one and thousand. Then my people give me the name. So, the first person that we're inviting to be in our Squid Game, if you want to enter, click the link in the description, buy the shirt or hoodie, is... The website did have a no purchase necessary link hidden at the bottom of the page, but there was no mention of this anywhere on the stream. The title was literally buy the shirt to be in a video, and Mr. B said they were selecting random winners. From the Shopify order list, all the clips I saw were the same thing, buy in the next minutes for a video for a chance to be in a video i cannot i'm reading like flight reacts right now that's nasty works you literally hid the fact that you don't have to purchase anything to get in the video or have a chance to get in the video i ain't gonna lie this might be the worst expose in history worse than any expose a that i've ever seen before this tops anything that prime idubs did it tops anything because this right here is bad bro Alonzo Diaz. Forgot to mention this stream. Some extra moments. Actual moment. hundred dollar bill. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, really? Like they actually sent a hundred dollar bill. Wait, what does what? it say? Oh, now we have to read the message. You and your crew are an inspiration to our young ones. He wanted to send you a hundred dollars. Oh my God. What can you do? Uh, everyone, click the link or the view product thing in the bottom left. Um, what it, we're gonna open three packages, and whatever's in those three packages, we're gonna give someone random that buys. He could have damn near gave money to the kid who sent them hundred dollars. He would, he would, you know what? Since you just gave me a hundred, let me give you a thousand. Like, what the? F Instead, you gonna make them? Do, you know what I'm saying? You see the vision? Do you see where I'm coming from? American dream. That's blazing. <laughs> Now I'm gonna to get to what, in my opinion, is the most unethical CTA giveaway that Mr. Beast has done. But before I do that, I really wanna drive home the point that the closer a sweepstakes is to an illegal lottery, the more money it makes. Because you know, every customer is supposed to be informed that they can enter easily for free and that making a purchase does not increase their chances of winning. Like you're supposed to say no purchase necessary in all of your promotional material, which Mr. Beast does not do. This legal gray area only leads to people getting scammed, especially the elderly and children uh, who are also being introduced to gambling. The only people who benefit off of sweepstakes are influencers and scammers. Remember Wizza, a sweepstakes company that got exposed as a total scam and shut down? Even Omaze, the charity sweepstakes company, got exposed as a scam and had to shut down in the US. Or back in the day, there was Mystery Brand. You remember Mystery Brand? So Mystery Brand is a website where you <laughs> purchase different boxes with chances of winning things. Take, for example, this women's Christmas box. It costs $15 to open, and you can win the most expensive Los Angeles realty. But you can't even click it, okay? It doesn't even give you more information, but apparently it's worth $250 million. 
I love that you can't click it. Like they're just like, trust us. There's a $250 million house with your name on it. All the way down to Icicle, site balance. Wait, I'm what? willing to bet that this is probably what 99% of the people are getting. Hey, at least Mr. Beast never wanted to work with this obvious scam. I mean, <laughs> at least Mr. Beast's manager never went on some podcast and talked about how Mr. Beast really wanted to work with this company. No, oh, what's this? Is there anything you've had to say no to? Um, yeah, tons. Uh, yeah. So a uh, good example. So it was about three years or two and a half years ago when I started working with Jimmy, what was becoming really popular were these like mystery loot crate, like internet mm -hmm. sites where you, it's basically like CSGO skins, but you'd go on and be like, here's the Supreme box and you'd pay $50 oh, for it. And remember it was yeah, like- Yeah, didn't Rice Rice Gum did so, uh, yeah, oh, quite a few people. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of hate for that. Right. Jimmy was, um, he wanted to work with that company when he heard about it, because it was a lot of money and we wanted to give that money away in a video. And I, I had to talk him back on it. I was like, listen, we're not, promoting gambling i think people are going to see this negatively so yeah. ah this is starting to get like aggravating because i ain't gonna lie bro first of all mystery loot boxes have to be top five most annoying scams on youtube and youtube history my first really really annoying experience with that was um pretty boy fredo when he used to do stuff like that that was very annoying and Mr. Beast, I would have thought he would have known better. And I ain't gonna lie, his manager is doing him no justice because now I, I'm he's looking horrible. The longer the video goes, the worse his appearance in my personal eye gets, bro. I ain't gonna lie, it's going bad right now. And then Jake Paul and Rice Gum ended up doing that deal and got a lot of hate for it. Uh, Jimmy, why is your manager saying that you wanted to promote this obvious scam to your young, impressionable audience? <laughs> Mr. Beast launched Feastables, his new chocolate brand, back in January 2022. I want to tell you guys about my new snack company, Feastables. They're made with only five ingredients, but still taste amazing. And I'm kicking off Feastables with something I've always wanted to do. Ten random bars are going to have a mystery ticket inside of them, and if you get this mystery ticket, we will fly you out to compete for a chocolate factory in one of our videos. And on top of that, Chandler, we're giving away over a million dollars in other prizes to random people that buy the bars. Dude, I need to buy these. It's interesting to look back at this because a large part of Feastables marketing campaign was the fact that it's a better for you brand, that it's healthier for you than Hershey's. Less sugar, only four ingredients, all organic. I wanted to just make a better for you snack brand because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's, for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Feastables bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. I got all the Feastable chocolates. Let's try them and rank them one to six. I'm going to be completely honest. Totally not biased because if it sells more, I make more money. I'm going to be honest. And I hope Jimmy is sitting next to me and not getting his feelings hurt. <laughs> Compare it to Hershey's. It's our crunch bar. Okay. This is the one you believe in? Yes. It's not crazy, Jimmy. No? Uh, you don't like crunch bars? I do like crunch bars, but... Again. <laughs> he looks like he's panicking. I ain't gonna lie. I don't, I don't eat crunch. So I can't really speak on that, but he's panicking right now. It's too sweet. Let me try this. Maybe these are defective. Oh I my like god! This tastes good to me. Wait, we supposed to be ranking them. I rated the first one. So we going completely off of. Oh, well, we're going completely off of. We're in too deep. I rate this a 10 out of 10. I give this an 11 out of 10. Keep in mind, only five ingredients. He's cooked. Infinitely healthier for you than the normal thing out there. Also my favorite so far. Okay, here's the thing. I didn't realize you were a dark chocolate guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a super dark chocolate guy. I do love dark chocolate. I get a sub. 7.8 out of 10. Okay, so I'm starting to understand yeah, this, man. Okay, okay. I'm starting to so, figure this man out. You're gonna like this one, right? You like salt? You, I mean, I you salt. sea salt guy. So, I yeah, just, it, he's looking like he's very like worried. He's not feeling it. He's like, I ain't gonna lie, this is bad. He was expecting 10 out of the 10s across the board. I'm gonna get rid of these. I love salt. No, you, I want the no, chocolate. You no, know, you just don't. You, this, trust me. You, you like. Is, you're a dark room? chocolate kind of guy. Yes. Okay. If, I, I can read the room. The room is red. I think this is a mask off moment for Jimmy. Mr. Beast had already filmed content and promoted tea to this point. Jimmy was definitely expecting a favorable review of his chocolate in return. Jimmy is well aware of the of the law of recipro of of reciprocity. How do you say? Okay, I know what reciprocating is. Reciproc I cannot say that word, bro. I'm about to crash out because I'm looking like I can't read. I have a good reading level in school. I promise you I can read. 
this is this is not a good show of character reciprocity reciprocity i can't i give up he uses gift giving as a business move here though keith chooses to maintain a level of integrity and give a more honest review than jimmy wanted personally i think jimmy undervalues his own integrity but it's, it's especially important for product view reviewers because co consumers are trusting these people to give unbiased purchasing advice Jimmy clearly feels insecure, out of control, and betrayed at times in this video and reacts poorly. It's not fair for Jimmy to expect Keith to mislead his audience for Jimmy's profit. Regardless, as a result, Keith likely lost some career opportunities with Mr. Beast moving forward. Jimmy is a sellout and surrounds himself with yes men. Bros never collaborate with Mr. Beast again. As a fact, but it's for the greater good. I do like that um Keith is keeping it a stack, you know what I'm saying? Now w in 2024, Lee. Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more oh, he's calories going per bar. And this initial ad for Feastables where he calls it healthy is still getting millions of views a month. That's also, crazy. I don't think he should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products, forcing you to spend more money if you actually want to redeem them. Ooh, a $5 coupon for Beast Burger. Now a single combo only costs $20. Whoa! I heard Mr. Beast Burger is hot ass too. So for that to be twenty five dollars is crazy. Bob's Burgers Palace or fucking Five Guys. If this shit can be successful, five fucking guys. Five Guys. It's so good. Who cares? It's called Five Guys. What kind of fucking name is that? It doesn't matter. Uh, it the does. burgers are good. Branding matters. Ooh. Mr. Beast Maybe. sues food company over revolting inedible burgers. What? YouTubers have discussed have described their Mr. Beast branded meals as disgusting. <laughs> Just spend a little less time on this uh, beautiful logo and more time on making the food actually edible. Ugh. What is that? Why is the meat pink? Brother, ugh. What's what that? What is that? <laughs> What's that, brother? Oh my God! Also, be for real, dude. Uh, Five Guys has a nice, clean, appealing aesthetic. You know, the name suggests humble beginnings. This is like a eight-year-old sloppy cotton candy piss burger. It literally looks like a piss burger. Mr. Beast and his dropship burgers taste like ass. Oh my also, god. This digital bro. reel is not remotely representative of your actual odds. Mark Rober has talked about this common deceptive casino tactic before. If you recall from the carnival scam video, the most lucrative games for the carnival owner are those where people overestimate their chances of winning. That is exactly what happens in this game. Thinking you were so close to getting a jackpot, when in reality, you weren't close at all. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and people will spend much more money to try and win because they think they can just do it on the next one. So I am absolutely pigging out on Feastable. Problem gamblers have highest suicide rate of any addiction disorder. Studies show there has been a recent rise in gambling products targeting children. Maybe video game loot boxes and unregulated online casino partnering with YouTubers and streamers are to blame. Either way, I find it concerning. At a time when the youth are living behind seven layers of irony and three anime profile pictures, it's hard to know what's a joke and what is sincere. I've seen ironic gambling memes be used as genuine justifications for financial suicide. Make no mistake, if you gamble, you're a moron. And if you promote gambling, you're a king, you're, you are king of the retards. It's not too late to escape from this idiocracy timeline. I don't think that Mr. Beast can make another video after this. If Mr. Bro, I'm going to lie, they say that you can't get cancer. If Mr. Beast makes another video and it's all good in the hood, it will be confirmed in my head that you can't get cancer. I mean, yeah, he has the most subscribers on YouTube, but bro, this is insane evidence. He might, bro, this is literally the like jail worthy evidence, bro. Um, and I'm trying to if, do this. Of course, Mr. Beast is teaching it was us considered gambling. in the court of law. Minus points because there's no cool music. Anyway. Uh, let's gamble. Also, these tickets, one of them just so happened to go to a YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers at the time. Just pure chance. This was just taped. It was taped. <gasps> no freaking way. 
So it is like really t- like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy? Say thank then. you for picking us. No, he didn't. It was random. I know. I wasn't. So why would they cut that out in the video, bro? Just try it again. Run that shit back. Because now you exposed yourself, bro. And I guess that makes it look even more genuine. Because why would you keep that in the video if it was actually false? I mean, if it was actually true that he picked you. But though, was it random? Also, this guy went on to win the Chocolate Factory. And extremely unlikely things do happen. But uh, can we see how the winners were chosen, maybe? Because knowing how important it is to Jimmy that every video has entertaining contestants through the whole video... It's a little suspicious. I, I'll just say, in my opinion, as somebody who worked for Mr. Beast, I don't think this large YouTuber won a ticket purely by chance. Also, I know that producers are sort of able to pull strings behind the scenes to give some contestants better chances than others. And he runs these sweepstakes to like bribe children with gambling to consume more sugar. Like, this is far worse than a lottery ticket because a lottery ticket doesn't give you diabetes and only pay out your rich and famous friends. Like, Mr. Beast is bringing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of new people to the candy aisle, whether he wants to admit it or not. People are just walking to the chocolate aisle, and instead of buying Hershey's, buying Feastables. Like, you, people who never would have bought chocolate in Walmart are walking mm. to the chocolate aisle specifically to buy Feastables. You're creating so, a new market. Exactly. Yeah. I'm bringing new customers. Yeah. To I'm bringing non-obese people to the chocolate aisle. What a hero. To the aisle. Okay, I guess he does want to admit it. Uh, you know, kind of a weird flex, not something I would brag about, Jimmy. Also, maybe I should mention technically I'm a certified nutritionist, which really just means I paid $1,200 for a course and then failed to launch a health food company. But I know that poor diet and especially excessive sugar consumption is the number one cause of death and health problems in America including some of the health problems that Mr. Beast claims to care so much about. Blindness, deafness, loss of limbs. Mr. Beast also just launched a combo with Zaxby's, which if you get a soda, it's over 2,000 calories for one meal. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. The only thing real in this video is the new Mr. Beast box at Zaxby's. I'm pretty sure this would be illegal in Europe. This is like more calories in one meal than the average 10 year old is supposed to consume on a daily basis. Jesus. Tell me how I'm killing little kids. Right. New research finds childhood obesity rates are getting worse. The number one killer in America is obesity. The number of deaths in overweight people surpass alcohol and smoking altogether. For 30 days straight, we are going to be giving away $10,000 to a lucky customer who scans the QR code on the back of any new Feastable bar. It's just disappointing to see somebody pretend to care about the health epidemic in the US only when it's profitable for them. I know this point isn't gonna resonate with a lot of people because of how normalized high calorie and high sugar diets are in America, but like bribing children to get into the habit of consuming excessive amounts of sugar, like $10,000 a day as a giveaway is very deliberate because it's trying to create repeat customers that just buy out of habits. Like doing this, especially when you clearly understand how much of a health risk it is to these kids. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. It, it's honestly just fucking evil to me. And I pushed back against this a lot while I worked at the company. For Halloween this year, Feastables is planning on putting a million dollars in a chocolate bar. And they wanted to do a bunch of like scummy marketing and shit. My manager literally said at one point that they wanted to associate buying a Feastables with your dream coming true. They're wow. pushing ideas like, you know, buy a Feastables, win 10K, uh, buy a Feastables out of a vending machine and the vending machine just starts spitting out money, buy a Feastables and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't wanna put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, I feel like Feastables is 70% a chocolate company and 30% a lottery targeted targeting children. And this higher up person on Mr. Beast said it was probably closer to the other way around and was laughing about it. Like 70% of lottery, 30% of chocolate company. Everyone knows this just the call to actions and call back. That is one of the most diabolical, like proudly preying on the kids. Nigga said. You think it's really more so chocolate? Hell no. It's the other way around. Like what bro? giveaways especially that drive sales as soon as they stop it's hard for large bargain retailers to sell this shit for 70 percent off that's why they push them so hard once they stop the diabetes lottery no one buys also this is the website right now mr beast wants you to join the crew just so weird and scummy to me 
I believe all the Feastables giveaways do have official rules and no purchase necessary clauses somewhere, but it's very difficult to find them. In traditional media, if you advertise a sweepstakes like in a commercial, you have to say in the promotional material itself, no purchase necessary. Somehow Mr. Beast gets away with not saying no purchase necessary in any of his promotional materials, not the videos, the descriptions, pinned comments, nothing. To celebrate our launch of milk chocolate and sea salt, we went out and we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prizes you see on the screen. And prizes aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to feastables.com right now and order. Even Logan Paul complies with sweepstick laws. That's how real it is, man. And I ain't gonna lie, bro. Bring that Hershey bar back, cause I'm not jacking with you guys something. I ain't gonna lie. I'm I might I might die of diabetes, God forbid. But I'm picking Hershey's over whatever whatever he got going on. And they even made their ingredients worse. So I ain't gonna lie, bro. You're not helping nobody at all. <laughs> only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating all the cake the only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the feastables twitter account because it's a rule of the platform and even still they try to push it no perch neck or hidden deep in the feastables website under a faq and to enter for free you have to mail in separate three inch by five inch hand addressed written index card 2020 it's 2024 you should be able to enter every sweepstakes over the internet. But he said, I'm not trying to do that. So he's trying to go all in to find any way out of it. Nigga said, we bought, wait, to enter the, to enter the sweepstakes without making a purchase, hand print your complete name, address, city, state, zip code, email address, and daytime phone number, including area code, on a 3 by 5 card and mail in a business size number 10 envelope with proper postage affixed to feastable black friday sweepstakes department number blah 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 all mail the entries must be postmarked by november 27th and received by december 1st to be considered for entry each mail-in entry will count as 30 entries into the sweepstakes each request must be mailed separately no typed computer printed mechanically produced Reproduce photocopy illegible or incomplete entries will be accepted and all such entries will be void. Bro, this nigga went the extra mile, bro. He's he's like, I ain't gonna lie, if you wanna enter my sweepstakes via via no purchase necessary, you're gonna have to do everything that you not want to do. I have to put all that information on a card and get a size number 10 envelope. Bro, what, what the, I, 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 I don't even know that envelopes have to have, like, specific sizes you can buy. Like, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the? Up to 10 a day. Do you think kids are going to do that shit or just beg their parents when they're at Walmart for the YouTuber diabetes lottery ticket? How is this legal? How do you mail something without making a purchase? Cards, envelopes, stamps. The free entry method can cost more than the chocolate bar itself. Also, going back to sweepstakes law for a second, payment isn't the only form of consideration. Consideration can also be time or effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast in some way. Like, I don't know, if he told his fans to clean up and organize his Feastables displays in Walmart for a chance to win $5,000. Shelfie cleanup and $5,000 drawing? They thought this was going to be a monthly thing, uh, but it got a lot of controversy, obviously. Mr. B sparks backlash after asking fans to clean up shelves. Honestly, <laughs> how oh can I successfully God, clean up the shelves? Wow, glad you asked. No bars on the shelf? Go find an employee and ask them to check to see if there is product in the back room and ask them to bring them out out so you can put it on the shelf to match the tags. Go, what, what the fuck, dude? Imagine a seven-year-old looking for the Walmart manager so he can ask to stock shelves. I ain't gonna lie, but it's gotta be the nastiest works of all time. Bro said, I ain't gonna lie, go do my job for me, bro. Go, go, go get some Walmart employee and start stacking my shelves, little bro. If you really want, if you really want that 5K, you gonna work for this 5K. And then on top of that, I need a drawing, little nigga. What? for a chance to be compensated? Dude, was Walmart in on this? This was not just one off the cuff tweet. This was like planned with instructions and graphics and everything. Also a company asking children for selfies is a little bit weird. 
And while you're at it, if you wanna maybe move some Hershey's bars and make sure that Feastables has plenty of space, I wouldn't complain. Wah! I just cannot believe they were gonna give $5,000 to one of Come Mr. On, Beast's bro. child laborers for stocking shelves. And no one at Mr. Beast was like, hey, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> Actually, if you said that, you'd probably get fired. This is the best tasty chocolate on earth. Good job, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we know that's the best taste in chocolate in the world? You're fired. What? This is such horse shit. You can do that? I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. The most shocking result was that Feastables never- So... Feastables best place for second place. I mean... Yeah, yes. ever earned anything higher than a third place ranking. But I do think their branding is like world's best chocolate bar is, um... How that? do you how do you get away with that? World's best chocolate. World's best pizza. What does that even what does that even what does that even fucking De mean? Define that yourself. Yeah, I mean I guess. But I would think you'd have to I don't know. I I'm sure whoever her worked on his marketing gave some thought to it or something. Okay, one last point on consideration. Prolonged attention is definitely a form of consideration. In the attention economy, it is the valuable resource that advertisers directly pay Mr. Beast for. So in these live streams when Mr. Beast says, hey guys, today we're doing a bunch of illegal lotteries, but also we're gonna be giving away some free stuff to people who keep watching. He does that to boost viewer numbers. I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, randomly, I'm not gonna tell you when, it could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm gonna randomly pick one person watching this IG live stream and one person watching this YouTube live stream. I'm gonna give you each $5,000. So, Brilliant. keep watching. There's no predictable intervals for when Mr. Beast will give things away for free to people who watch. So you have to be present when they happen, which means viewers have to keep watching, which is time and effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast. The more viewers, the more money Mr. Beast obviously makes, either directly through sales or AdSense or just getting boosted in the YouTube algorithm. So even the free giveaways could and should be against the law. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the currency you pay with is attention. Do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world? Well, of course. Uh, or labor or money Yo, sometimes. Bro. Yeah, his core audience is like, I'd say like 10 to 12 year old mm. boys. Older people are a little bit over him. Some people kind of question the ethics, you know, they sometimes say in these videos where he like builds all these wells or, you know, cures people of all this blindness. It's almost like he's exploiting people for these views. So older audiences don't love him, but this tween audience, they love him. And they're thinking, you know, watching him could get me a car. So why wouldn't I? <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys a reason to keep watching. Creating lottery tickets for engagement is not generous, it's profitable. Are casinos generous? Social media should not be pay to win. Ban giveaways. Uh, Mr. Beast, did, what, what, what's, this, what's this Twitter, I mean Instagram comment? It's my 26th birthday, so I'm giving away 26 Teslas to my followers. Like and comment on this post tagging two friends to enter. Make sure you're following so I can DM you if you win a Tesla. Winners will be announced in seven days. Share this to your story and help your friends win a Tesla. Also gives away 20 Teslas for his own birthday. He's so kind. I don't know if it's kind. This is how he makes more money. No, because he didn't have to do that. But he still makes money by doing it. This is how Mr. Beast giveaways appear to violate Instagram's TOS and might violate state laws. Mr. Beast giveaways was taken down by Instagram after Twitter trolls complained about it. Wow. Okay, now as far as fake giveaways go, I'm sort of limited in what I can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued. So my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks and personally, I believe that is intentional. Here's one example where- Nina, a bunch of people got screwed over by a big YouTuber, Mr. Beast, and I don't know what to do. I'm gonna let him talk. Maybe he might talk about it himself before I read it myself. So Someone on Reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting Mr. Beast use them in a video. Five months later, they still haven't received their dog food. Wow. I actually sent this post to someone who works at Mr. Beast, and they said they were gonna send it to the PR team, and then the Reddit post got taken down. Wow. So I don't know if it got resolved. Here's another example of things slipping through the cracks. The second thing that I probably would do different is invest. And I know what y'all about to say, 
Y'all about to go to the clip too, where Jimmy said that we set a certain amount aside to invest. I know you talked about wanting to maybe invest 50K and then set aside like the other 23 for just other little nuances yes. here and there. This is not me calling anybody a liar or anything, because I know what I know what y'all do, I know what the internet does. But what I think what happened was somebody that worked for Mr. Beast or something like that was supposed to probably help me invest, but that didn't happen. I talked to Jimmy uh when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like got the remaining amount in my bank account, I was telling him, I was like, man, I don't want to fail. I don't want to be like how everybody's saying, like I'm gonna run out of money and do all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, Jimmy, please help me. And he said he was gonna help me and trying to, and we was gonna invest, but yeah, that didn't happen, so. Hi, if you actually watch this video, you know, Mr. Beast does say that they're not gonna be irresponsible, that they're gonna try to set Mark up for life and that they are gonna help him with investing. What we're actually gonna do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. So we're gonna make smart purchases like a house, cars, and do some investing. But according to Mark, Mr. Beast only gave him an hour to plan what house to buy. That's and crazy. Then gave him only 24 hours to spend the bulk of his money for a video. Time. I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have planned out stuff better. Like that was the, the best, best example I can give you is when uh, we had planned out the house and stuff. I literally have had an hour. He, he had somebody come to my house and we sat down and we planned all this in an hour. Yeah, they came to my house and we planned this out and yeah, in about an hour. So I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have did a couple things differently on the time management side, which I guess I really couldn't help because I had to spend it. I had to spend the money and I had to like do all this. So I'm starting to think he might've been a little bit better off if you didn't make him spend a million dollars in 24 hours for content. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. All I need from you is a signature right here. Vehicles are yours. Well, we're actually gonna do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. You better not read it. You're a millionaire. You ain't got time to read. <laughs> the you. more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God you won the million dollars. Yeah, get a close up of how poor he was before I saved him. Oh my God, bro. I buy my chocolate and I might save you too. You're selling Krabby Patties, eh, Plankton? That's right, Squidward. And there's a free bucket helmet with every purchase. Care for one? No. You may have hoodwinked everyone else in this backwater town, but you can't fool me. I listen to public radio. What's that supposed to mean? It means you set up Mr. Krabs. You stole the crown so Neptune would freeze him and you could finally get your stubby little paws on the Krabby Patty formula. It was you all along. But you made one fatal mistake. You messed with my paycheck. And I'm gonna report you to the highest authority in the land, King Neptune. The FTC. We'll see about that, Inspector Loose Lips. <laughs> what is the FTC? Now activating helmet brain control devices. What? What is this episode? I need to watch it immediately. What's going on here? Seize him, slaves! All hail, Plankton! Ah! Come get down here! All hail, Plankton! Who can stop me now? Now be like shocked, like have your hands over your face, like you're as emotional as you can be. So like, have your hand reaching. Wait! Wait! Wait, wait, wait for it, and they'll like be like shocked, like you're, yeah. Now act a little surprised. Okay, look, just for the thumbnail. Listen, I ain't gonna lie, bro. You got a fake thumbnail. Thumbnails like are not organic. Don't you have to fake thumbnails? That's I mean, it depends though. Like there's a certain way you fake thumbnails. Like putting your putting a shocked reaction in the thumbnail. That's not bad because you know you're trying to make. They're gonna get across the point of the title and the thumbnail and the video, but like making somebody genuinely do something completely fake for that thing, having a fake thing that never happened in the video be a part of the thumbnail, that's crazy. Like, there's certain ways about going about things, but all around, bro, this is a complete masterclass of destruction for Mr. Beast, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I do not know what to think right now.
I've gone through my entire, uh, like what last eight years of my life thinking Miss Beach is a good person. Come to find out, bro has been a D one scammer with all the Hall of Fame badges, and he got away with it for years. But he got exposed now. So, I mean, what do you expect, bro? He makes so much money. I it's I've never really like a person making that much money. It's hard to find a way to see a dude be actually a good person, bro. It's rare for somebody with that much money to be a good person. Like it's just not normal, you know what I'm saying? But that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. And I'm out, bro. Peace.